In penance for the last couple of goofy, silly, pointless videos that I've uploaded, I figured it was time to reel it in a bit and do something that other folks may find useful. So today I'm going to be demonstrating a couple tips and tricks that I stole that I find make my life a little bit easier in Fuzzland. Pass that information along to you. Now I'm going to start off demonstrating, a, well, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about multimeters. If you're new to this stuff and uh, you don't own a multimeter, maybe you have one, you don't know what all the settings are. I'm going to direct you to my multimeter tutorial. Now, if you really want to learn something about multimeters, there's a gentleman by the name of Chromosphere who runs this excellent, it's a top notch music electronics related do it yourself YouTube channel. Chromosphere has done a multimeter tutorial that was mentioned in Premier Guitar by Brian Wampler. So, hats off to Mr. Chromosphere. Now, I can say that with confidence because he really has earned a little bit of recognition. He's got, I see good things in the future for Chromosphere. For one, he's he's really done his homework. He's invested a lot of his resources to bring you the information that he has. And quite honestly, he could be able to make some money back on all this that he's invested, but he doesn't, which is very honorable. He puts it all out there in a concise, no-nonsense format on YouTube. So it's pretty much the antithesis of what I do here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and Miracle on 34th Street you over to Chromosphere's channel. I can hear the clicks ringing out into the night. And if you're, like, let's say you're in a coma, or maybe you were a really bad guy, you're in a body cast, and, like, your family came in and clicked on this, and now they've walked out as a punishment for a lifetime of bastardization. We'll continue. So this is my El Cheapo meter. Um, you know, I've got this Walmart. It's a... Equius Innova 3320. This is like my meter, and uh, I love this thing. It was like 1850 when I got it. They're like 2450 now, uh, but it doesn't have the HFE test. HFE is for transistors. HFE is like gain or volume for the device, and you know with each transistor, even though they're the same model number, they're a little bit different HFE, and sometimes you might want to know that. Um, sometimes it might be important. So I was at Menards and I had a little bit of extra money to spend. Turns out these things, you can get these for as cheap as three bucks is what I recently read on the internet. I had a little bit of extra money that day and I, I knew that, you know, I didn't have the HFE test on my meter. So I saw this thing and I was like, man, I'm going to get it. It's only seven bucks. So I bring it home. A while goes by. I didn't really use it. And then I'm, one day I'm like, I'm going to test HFE. So pop a transistor in here. Nothing. Pop another one in here. Nothing. And I'm like jiggling around, all of a sudden, boop, I came up, I was like, was that 816 or 168 or... So what it is, is with the transistor, it has three legs, and these are poorly designed socket. It's very difficult, I mean, like almost impossible to get all three legs of the transistor to make contact in the socket at the same time. So this is garbage. It's a complete waste of seven bucks. So what I've done is, these here are sockets. And you use these when you don't want to solder a component in, like if you're going to maybe test out a few different transistors or capacitors, which can affect the tone of the circuit. Instead of soldering it in and then being stuck, you can solder in the socket, which has pins on the bottom, and then there's like a little cup where you can just jam the parts in there and pull them out. Now, some folks talk about, you know, like if you're, if you're like me and you're drinking a lot, and you're banging the thing around, the part's going to fall out. Well, I don't know about that so much, but... Because there is electricity passing through it and it's not like a physical connection, I would think that it's going to oxidize in there a bit and it's going to create a little bit of a load. Um, not that big of a deal, really, but if you wanted to, what I would recommend is after it's socketed for a while and you know, well, I'm not going to mess with that anymore. It is what it is and it's in there. You can go ahead and just solder it in there, you know, just a little bit, maybe flux to help you out. Bloop, 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 solder it in there, you're good. So what I've done here to make this meter work, you can probably already guess where this is going. You turn around and look at the back of this thing, and you can see that, yeah, there's the, the sockets right there, and that's labeled in the front. There's two types of transistors that we'll test, NPN and PNP. And then it says EBC, that's emitter, base, and collector, 
respectively. You know, you get that information when you buy the transistor. So what I've done is I took a socket, use a sharp knife to cut them off on both sides. You cut it, and then you crack it, and then I, you know, I wrapped some tape around it, labeled it for now. And I used colored wires and ran them down, and then soldered that in on the back here. So I took my chassis and I used a little mini file and I cut a slot out for the wires, so I can, you know, put the put it back together with the wires running through this little slot on the side and then what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna redo this whole thing for one there's two of these MPN and PNP so I'm gonna put some shrink boot over the wire and then I'm gonna figure something out a little better than just masking tape with the late for the labeling but I'm, the point is I'm gonna use some JB Weld automotive epoxy which is excellent stuff JB Weld not the quick weld that's not so hot, but the regular standard JB Weld, you can get that all over. Specifically, you know, Walmart or your auto parts store will carry that. But I'm going to use JB Weld to glue it onto the side of the unit, and then I'll have NPN and PNP over here, and I'll have to figure out something for the labeling. I've actually, I just got a label maker for Christmas from my daughter, Quee. Thanks, Quee. That was awesome. So, that's the functioning. HFE test on the El Cheapo multimeter. And I'm going to take a quick break here and move on to the next little tip and trick. Thanks for joining me. Ah, it's grapefruit juice. <laughs> you know, on second thought, rather than have this thing turn into like an hour and a half long thing, I'm going to break up and do all these tips and tricks in separate videos. Try to encourage to actually get people to click on one of these things and watch it. So, thank you very much for watching. If you would subscribe or thumbs up, I really appreciate it. You know, I got a couple of habits to support here. So, I appreciate all of you. Uh, good luck in everything you do. May all your circuits come up right the first time, which has never happened here. Uh, peace. Keep on having.